Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with another interface review for you guys. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the Apogee Duet for iPad, iPhone, Mac, and as they just announced at NAMM a couple of days ago, it'll be coming to Windows. If you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around 600 bucks. I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I'm recording at 24-bit, 192 kilohertz, with the Rode NT1 connected directly to the Duet with the input gain set at plus 35 decibels. I won't do any post-processing, compression, or EQ, but I will likely boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to find out what I did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. That was a close one. You're obviously going to get the interface. You get a breakout cable. You get the USB cable to connect it to your computer. You get a power cable. You get a bunch of international power adapters. And you get some documentation. As far as the build quality, this thing feels about as good as it should given the $600 price tag. It has an all aluminum chassis with a plastic face. On the top, you will find a single dial that you can press to switch between input one, two, speaker output and headphone output. You have two programmable buttons that can perform different tasks, which we'll talk about later, but the default setting would be clear meters and mute outputs. And then you have this LED screen with the meters to show you what levels you're getting and all of that fun stuff. Then on the front of it, you will just find a single quarter inch headphone output, which does offer latency free monitoring, which does take some setup. And we'll talk about that a little later. Then on the back, you will find a USB plug to connect this to your computer or your iOS device, although the iOS device does require a cable that's not provided. You'll find a plug to connect the power supply, you'll find the breakout cable connector, and you will find a USB MIDI connector. Then on the breakout cable, you will find a set of quarter inch outputs which you will run to your powered monitors, and then you'll find a set of XLR combo jacks which allow you to connect XLR or quarter inch inputs. As far as the specs, this thing has a bit depth of 24 bit, a sampling rate of up to 192 kilohertz, plus 48 volts phantom power, and a gain range of up to plus 75 decibels of gain. And in order to get the most out of this interface, you do need to download the Maestro 2 software off of Apogee's website. So let's go ahead and walk through that software now. So first up here, you have a clear meters button, which will just clear the meters down here in case you have any peaks or anything like that. Then you have a brief overview of the interface telling you what sample rate, what your clock source is, and if the interface is ready to run. Then you have easily accessible controls for your speaker output or your headphone output, and the M will end up muting those devices. On the left hand side, you will see a list of all your Apogee devices. So if you had multiple duets or a quartet or anything else, this would list all the devices so you can access the controls for that device. Then we have these five tabs up here, input, output, device settings, mixer, and system setup. On the input tab, we have the controls for both channels. The first thing you'll find is an analog level selection, and this will allow you to select between microphone, instrument, plus four decibels or negative 10 decibel line. Then you have the option to turn on or off the soft limiter, which will help with clipping if you are running a bit hot. Then you have the option to adjust your gain right here in the app. Obviously, this right here is the meter. Then you have the ability right here to group the two channels together in case you're running a stereo input into this interface. You have the option to turn on or off the 48 volts phantom power. And then you have a phase invert button in case you're getting any kind of phase cancellation. Then on the output level, we have line one and line two, which are going to be the quarter inch outputs on the breakout cable. You have the left and right headphone output meters. And then over here, you have the controls for both the speaker and the headphone output. If you do want to get latency free monitoring, you need to click this little drop down menu and select mixer. Directly next to those outputs, you have a few more settings. You have an M for mute. You have a D for dim, or this will decrease the output in case you want to check the mix at different levels. And then you have a sum to mono in case you want to check for phase inversion or phase cancellation issues. On the device settings tab, you have the ability to adjust the prefix in case you're recording with multiple Apogee interfaces. You can adjust the left and right programmable buttons to clear meters. You can toggle the headphone source, sum to mono, you can dim, you can mute, or you can have them do nothing. And then you have the ability to lock the home view. And to be honest, I'm not sure what that does. So as I mentioned earlier, if you wanna get zero latency monitoring, you have to switch the, this output to mixer. So when we jump over to the mixer tab, this is what we're gonna see. 
We have volume controls for input one and two. We have the ability to adjust the software return, and this would be your computer playback. And then we have the ability to adjust the mix master. And this is just a very basic, very simple headphone output mixer. If you don't wanna hear latency-free monitoring, all you have to do is mute that, and then you won't hear latency-free monitoring, but you still will be able to hear the software return. And that's really it for the mixer tab. Then on the system setup tab, we have a few more settings. We have the ability to adjust the sample rate you're recording at up to 192 kilohertz. We have the ability to adjust how long a peak will hold on the meter and how long the red indicator will appear if you have clipped. And lastly, if you have a peripheral that controls volume, you have the option to change that between headphone or speaker volume. So as you can see right here on the screen, my gain on input one is set at 30. I'll go ahead and decrease this to zero and slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of noise is generated by the Duet's preamp. And now to really test the interface's preamps, I've connected the SM7B directly to the interface. I had to increase the gain to plus 60 decibels, and this is the sound we're getting. Now we're looking at the latency of this interface. At 128 samples, we're at 17.6 milliseconds round trip, 4 milliseconds output. At 256, we're at 23.5 milliseconds round trip, 7 milliseconds output. And if we drop it down to 64, we're at 14.5 milliseconds round trip and 2.5 milliseconds output. Now I have my Les Paul Studio that has passive pickups connected directly to the Duet. My input gain is set at 3, and this is how the guitar sounds as a DI tone. It's a bit out of tune, but you get the idea. And then if we activate bias amp, So to put it simply, this is just a really amazing interface. In terms of pros, this thing is just really well built. You're getting a really nice, relatively low noise floor. You're getting great microphone pre's that go up to 75 decibels of gain. You're getting great analog to digital converters, a great headphone amp, some really nice latency. And on top of all of that, you're getting 48 volts phantom power. But then in terms of cons, the first thing that comes up is the price. Yes, you are getting an amazing device, but $600 is a lot of money and it's just out of the budget for a lot of people. And on top of that, I'm not a fan of the breakout cable because I think it makes everything a bit too cluttered. And I'm also not a fan of digging through software to make adjustments to settings or clicking through a wheel to get to the right channel to adjust the gain. So where to recommend this thing? Kind of. I just don't think a lot of people are gonna get $600 of use out of this interface. I think you could go with a lower end model and be okay. But if you're an audiophile or you work on professional records and you need the high quality Apogee A to D and D to A converters and you do a lot of traveling so you need a small form factor interface, I think this thing is killer and I think you're really gonna like it. All right, guys, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. If you want to influence what I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcast. You can cast a vote there. If you want more videos, logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server. Link in the description, and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.